Hello guys and welcome again to Changes and Reworks Guide for the Alpha on BFA. Today I'll be doing the Protection Warrior Changes and Reworks. There's been a few changes to uh, Warrior Protection, probably one of the biggest changes to tanks in general, and that now Warrior is pretty viable with the changes to Ignore Pain. So I'll be going through that now. Obviously for the first, um, like I did with my other tanks, with the Brewmaster, the DK, DH and Pala, I'll be going through the survivability talents first and then full out damage build. So for talents, Shockwave, Stormbolt, Warbringer, it's exactly the same, talent 1. I always take Shockwave due to the fact that once you've used Intercept, Intercept once, which will give you Warbringer in the stun, you're not really going to get full use out of it again. But obviously with Shockwave you can leap onto an ad, Shockwave and you're going to stun lots and lots of them. So that's how I take that. Safeguard intercepting a friendly target now also causes 30% of the damage tr to transfer to you. I don't really like using this. I don't like just intercepting all over the place. It will just get you out of position. So I took impending victory due to the fact that it instantly attacks the cars, causing 600 damage and healing you for 15% of your maximum health. Um, you can use this now without getting a charge. You can just use it now every 30 seconds. And if you don't kill an ad, you can still use it every 30 seconds. So this means every 30 seconds you're going to get 15% maximum health, it's just a self heal. Next one, Renewed Fury, Ignore Pain also enrages you, increases the normal damage you deal by 10% for 6 seconds. Best Serve Cold, Revenge deals 5% more damage per target hit up to 5. And Avatar. Here I like taking Revenge, because obviously when you use Revenge you're going to be able to get either instant shield slams, get just... You really want to be using Revenge a lot on cooldown as much as possible. So I like using Best Serve Cold due to the fact that I'm going to deal more damage with revenge and I'm going to be, that is the spell I'm going to be using most often. So that just helps. I like taking bounding stride because obviously it allows me to heroic leap more and I get a speed buff after a heroic leap so I can gather up adds quicker. Um, yeah, warlord challenge, I don't really like it and neither crackling thunder, you don't really need the radius is increased. Next one, indomitable, increases your maximum health by 20%. Devastator and never surrender. I take Never Surrender because obviously with a change to Ignore Pain, Ignore Pain now, fight through the pain for the next 4 seconds causing 80% of damage taken to reduce your rage instead. So when you use this, before it's 60% but with the added Never Surrender it's an additional 20. So the way Warriors work now is you'll use your Ignore Pain when you haven't got enough rage for Shield Block or um, Shield Wall. So in between your shield, shield Blocks when they're getting recharged and you don't have anything up, you need to make sure you've got your Ignore Pain up. So that you're, once your shield blocks are down, you're not just completely vulnerable like warriors were in Legion. Whereas once their once their blocks were down, they were just pure. They were just paper. They just mount. And especially now that ignore pain, you don't have to use rage for it. It's just instant. It's really really good for warriors in general, and they're saving rage. And they're just the class is a lot lot more fluid with rage regeneration and spending it. So that's why I take never surrender. Indomitable, I don't really like it, and Devastate is just not good at all, so never surrender always. Next one, Into the Fray, you're going 3% haste for each enemy within 15 yards. It's just not good, you aren't going to get the full use out of it. Booming Voice, Demoralizing Shout, also generates 60% rage, increases the damage you deal to affect the target. This is good, but Vengeance is just way, way better than all of them for survivability. Shield Block reduces the rage cost of your next revenge by 33%, and Revenge reduces the cost of your next Shield Block by 33%. Reduce the rage of shield block, that's just really good. We're keeping up our defensives, 100% guaranteed block. So yeah, it's really good to keep up them blocks. And obviously we've reduced rage of revenge, especially with best serve cold. That's just really, really good. So for the last time, this is just the classic from Legion. Anger management, heavy repercussions and ravaging it. You always want to take heavy repercussions just for survivability. It's way better than all of them. Shield slam extends the duration of shield block by one second. Shield block increases the damage of your next shield slam by an additional 5%. This means you just want to make sure that you're using your sh um, your shield block before you shield slam so you're getting the increased duration. If you're using a shield slam and then uh, shield block and you're not getting the full use out of your um, heavy repercussions. So what you want to do is you want to start off with an intercept so you get building up rage. Use your devastate and then a shield block because it became instant. Spam your devastate so that you're, um, you're building up rage. And so now I've got an instant uh, shield block. Shield slam, sorry. So obviously, because I haven't got any shield blocks up, I'm going to use my... Um, oh, obviously, now I've got one. So I want to be using up my... Um, I want to be using up my Rage on Revenge while um, 
shield blocks down. So shield blocks down now. I'm going to use um, ignore pain as well. So I'm reduced damage taken. Just not going to be taking a lot of damage. I'm going to get ready to um, use up an X shield block. So I'm dodging everything. So use up them. Get ready to use an ignore pain. Use ignore pain now. I'm reducing all damage taken. Use that instant shield block. And just keep using up your rage, spending it on shield blocks. So it's pretty much the usual for, for warriors. But more the fact that you'll have more rage just all round to put up more shield blocks and more and bring out more revengers with the um, with ignore pain now not requiring rage. So for all out damage, the ones you want to be taking is let me just change my tone. Shockwave again, shockwave's just really, really good because obviously it deals damage to all the targets and stuns them, so you want to keep that. Impending victory as well, because obviously when once you've killed one ad, you can go use this attack on another, and it's quite a strong attack. 600, dam 600 damage is quite a lot now in um, BFA, and obviously it heals you, so that's really, really good. Next, you just want to take best serve cold, due to the fact that you're going to be using revenges a lot, and with you're going to deal more damage per target hit, which is really good, really good, because you can get revenge up to 25% increased damage, and it's just going to do a lot, lot, lot more damage. Next one, what you want to take is Crackling Thunder. Just so that your your um, your thunderclap is hitting all the targets and deal damage to them and slowing them, so that's why you want to wait. You want to take crackling thunder. Next one you want to take, it's down to you. But um, indomitable is pretty good here because you're not going to be using shield blocks a lot and you're going to be using a, a lot of your rage and revenge. So just that extra flat twenty percent increased health, so you don't have to use shield blocks as much and you can just ignore pain. And with indomitable, you're not going to be you're not going to be taking a lot of damage. You're going to be really really good with that extra twenty percent. So for your next, Into the Fray, Booming Voice, and Vengeance, you want to take um, Booming Voice here, due to the fact that um, when, when you use that demoralizing um, shout, you're going to get 60, 60 rage, so you can use that on, venge on revenge and on uh, shield blocks, especially incorporated with Ravager as well. You can use your um, demoralizing shout every minute with Ravager, so you can maybe make a macro of that, so Ravager hits your location. And you demoralizing shout the target. So if you see like this, so you demoralizing shout, instant energy, instant rage, sorry, then you can thunderclap. And then you can also put down a ravager. Because you're dealing more damage to all the um, um and you're you're dealing more damage to all the targets you've hit with your um with hit your demoralizing shout. So you're gonna be doing so much damage with all the men in your ravager as well. Because they're gonna be taking 15% increased damage with that um, ravager. And when you're inside Ravager, your parry chance is increased by 35%. So it's just really, really good. Warriors can put out a lot, a lot of DPS now. Especially with Booming Voice and Ravager as a little combo. So Warriors looking really, really promising. And especially with the new Ignore Pain. Warriors are looking really, really promising. And probably one of the more stronger um, tanks. But that could all change. They could change the values. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, that's Protection Warrior. That's the outset. If you like the video, then like and subscribe, and comment if I missed anything, and see you in the next one.